Hey everybody, it's Derek from DDU2611. Hope everybody's doing well. I just wanted to give another update on my bee moss slash wax worm container breeding. I actually had several that, uh, two containers that bred and produced a lot. Uh, one I got some mature worms from, which I will show you right here. Grab out some examples here. Here's one of them. He's moving around. See if I can get him a little bit more lively there for the camera. There's one. Used a lot of them fishing, and I got other ones in other containers. I kind of have three containers of them right now that I haven't fished. You know, the ones I haven't fished, fished with. You know, that's a smaller example of them. You know, one of the smaller size ones I have. Because as they grow, I believe with waxworms, aka bee moths, they live off their body fat once they become uh, moth, I mean, uh, mature larva. So after a certain point, they don't eat until they're ready to pupate, uh, which is when they enter their transformational phase into becoming moths. And so I believe from what I've read, they actually use up their fat reserves and actually get smaller as they get older and more mature. So, I mean, I got some that are real small. There are obviously babies, but then I also have some that have been around a while and they're kind of shrinking. So I think after, that might be a true, true theory. Uh, about something that actually happens as they use up their fat reserves uh, once they get, you know, mature, then they kind of live off their body fat. And then when that declines, uh, then they're ready to transform. So I have two jars set up. One of them, like I said, that's where some of these guys came from. I also have a couple more containers of them that came from the glass jar. This is the kit, the kit jar. You've all seen this in my videos. If you're new here, welcome. I appreciate you being here. And you're probably wondering why do I have all this condensation? Why do I have all this moisture around the jar? And that is because of the waxworm's body heat. Meaning I have so many of these guys in this container. You can see all the webs that they've go gone through, through the food. Let's take a look underneath. I can't see what you guys are seeing right now, so hopefully it's interesting, but there's definitely some action right there. You can see the different size groups of them. Some have gotten more to eat, obviously, and been around a little bit longer than others. There's the breeder block. You can see all that moisture, the webs. And so I'm going to be harvesting some of these guys today. And I will be putting them in the freezer for nine minutes in my freezer. Uh, to kill their spinning glands, and that's how you can keep them in the sawdust for months at a time without them resuming the cycle and turning into moths so they have a better shelf life. Now, everybody's fridge is different. I have I started at 10 minutes. That worked, but then I noticed some were dying off. I went to 9 minutes. Seemed to work a little bit better. Although some still die off waxworms, you're going to have some turn black and die no matter what you do. They'll turn brown or black and get all mushy. Uh, I mean, there's even one in the container right here that I'm going to have to dispose of here. You can see that right there. So I'm not too concerned about it, you know. Just that's why I go through my bait every, every several days just to make sure 
every all my live bait is up to par and up to my standards not that i'm anything great or anything but if i'm going to be using live bait and especially growing my own live bait i want to make sure that the supply that i have is consistent uh healthy lively because when you get in a tough bite uh, and i've had panfish bites lately where i haven't even haven't even used live bait I mean, they've been hitting, hitting on artificials and soft plastics. Uh, been casting for them, actually, with Roadrunner jigs. Uh, fantastic panfish setup. Fantastic. Uh, the Roadrunner heads, I mean, you'll catch bass, walleye. I mean, you'll catch anything that swims on a Roadrunner. Uh, but you use the smaller sizes, like 116th, 132nd ounce. And they're a fantastic, phenomenal crappie bait. Phenomenal. Add whatever your favorite soft plastic, twister tail, crappie grub, whatever you want to call them to the end of it. And your favorite color combos, whatever. And they are fantastic. Cast, it's a nice slow retrieve to make that blade on the, uh, the head spin. And they're fantastic. There's several knockoffs out there too. Uh, I don't know if I should call them knockoffs, but they're similar designs. They're a bladed jig head that you can be fished with either live bait or artificials. I use artificials on them. Sometimes I'll tip with live bait if needed, but I have been trying to become more comfortable without live bait. Uh, but there are cases, you know, post cold front, etc., where the fish are going to be finicky and if you put a little meat on the end of your hook or your jig, whatever you're using, you'll get more strikes. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be packaging these guys up here. Uh, there's my finger compared to some of these guys. So some of them are actually reaching a bait size. Uh, this container is actually a little bit later to mature uh, than my other container. The other ones grew much faster than these did. Uh, probably because there wasn't as much overcrowding in the other container and there was more food to go around for each individual worm. So I'm sure that's why they grew a lot faster. And that one is now has pupae in it, ready to transform into moths, lay eggs, and start the cycle all over again over the next several weeks. Uh, yeah, being a waxworm farmer is actually pretty rewarding. I go through a lot of bait being a pan fisherman. Uh, even though I do, I'm trying to use artificials more. Sometimes you can't beat, you know, the if the fish are lethargic, putting, uh, put it hanging in a, a bee moss or a cricket or a minnow or whatever in front of their face under a, under a float. Uh, that seems to trigger them almost all the time, so... I uh, hope everybody out there is doing well, and it's been a crazy ride as far as the weather goes here. Uh, we've actually, you know, it's mid-May and we've had frost warnings the past week, but it looks like the weather is going to be becoming more uh, moderate here. It's going to be moderating a little bit, so... Hopefully that means more stable fishing conditions and ultimately more fishing success for not only me, but for all of you guys too. I care about what you guys catch. Please, if you guys have any uh, adventures or any recent footage, let me know. Uh, again, I'm a firm believer in we're all in it together. And, you know, I got subscribers that fish for fish that I would never even consider fishing for but their content is fantastic it's great it's unique and I think that's what makes it interesting you know if everybody did the same thing and fished for the same species or approached them in the same way I mean there wouldn't be anything to learn from so all you guys out there no matter what species you fish for no matter what time of year you fish for no matter what part of the country or the world you're in Hope you guys take care, and I will see you on the next episode. And here is a good look at the wax worms, and hopefully these will put some bags of 
crappie and bluegill and who knows, maybe even some yellow perch into the freezer. Catch you guys on the next episode. Till next time, good fishing.